Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. Welcome here to CES 2023. I want to talk about charging specifically with Autel. You guys know we've actually done some things with them. They sent us a level two charger that we installed. I was pretty impressed with the unit. Um, but what I'm more excited about is to see them actually get into DC fast charging. I'm not covering every charging company here, but I am talking about the ones that I think are going to become the most important throughout this year. And just talking with other automakers, you know, we know all the charging guys at automakers they're really getting excited about Autel here and I'm like wow okay if Daimler Ford etc if they're like Autel Autel I'm like okay let's go film these guys see everything they're about they have brand new DC fast charging offerings that are all designed and engineered in-house so uh, yep let's go explore some of their chargers <laughs> You join me over here at the Autel booth. Hey guys, how's it going? And uh, gonna take you on a tour of A first, their product offerings, and then we're gonna talk to John. <laughs> All the Autel guys are awesome uh, and have become friends throughout this process. It's, you know, for me, charging is one of those tough things because it's hard to tell who's good, who's bad, who's actually engineering a reliable product. And honestly, the proof is in the pudding. Before I, we even go into any of this, I will be testing Autel chargers out in the wild, making sure they work. But I have to say their approach has been different than almost any charging company. This video is not sponsored in any way. I'm just truly impressed at what I'm seeing here, how hard they're going into the space, how much money they're spending and how much time they're taking to engineer weather tests uh, for reliability, et cetera, et cetera. So I think actually what we should do is we should start on the AC side. I don't wanna to focus too much on AC charging here because we've already done a deep dive on some of their AC charging points, but uh, I do wanna talk about that first. And then we'll of course go into some of their DC offerings. So I think starting it off with the big boy right here, take a look at this. This is a dual port, custom, uh, you know, sort of a commercial installation. It can do 80 amps per port at the same time. So you would essentially wire this up to two 100 amp circuits and uh, you know, rock and roll. We're talking big boy AC charging speeds over 19 kilowatts. The reason this is so interesting to me is you guys know those charge point units that we see all the time that only do 30 amps per post and it drives me nuts. You know, I'm always complaining about them because they're seven, eight, nine thousand dollars a post. And the reason they can sell them is of course because of government incentives and everything. They're just free chargers for people and they're putting in really low power stuff. They're reliable, yes, but they don't have the juice. Here, these things cost in the same range. It, you know, it obviously depends on how many you buy, but in the same range and it has more than twice the power. We're talking 80 amps per port at the same time. Now you don't necessarily have to wire this up to something that high. If for whatever reason you had a power limitation at your particular site, you could actually just wire it up to whatever you have. There's dip switches inside, you can power share. For example, if you only have 60 amps available, you could go 60 out of one port and 30 and 30, totally customizable. And of course, it even has a screen in here to tell you pricing, really high definition screen, and of course, RFID access. One thing I wanna discuss is every Autel charger installed, and I think we're gonna see a lot of these based off of ChargePoint operators I've met with, as well as automakers, every Autel charger, similar to ChargePoint, can be actuated, or I should say activated, with the Autel app. So these will all be, um, you know, we should just all download the Autel app basically as we start to see these out in the wild. And you should be able to activate them as well with the ChargePoint operator who's in, who installs them. So this is a product I'm really excited about. I like it better than any single post dual outlet that I've seen so far. For example, I was just over at EV Box and they have a, a unit that costs more than this, I believe at least, is what they told me, and only had 30 amp per unit. I was like, what the hell's going on here? So nice work to Autel for pumping the juice. We're gonna get into some of the DC products uh, over time here in just a minute, but I wanna tell you about these level two products. There's a lot of interest over here, of course. These things, of course, are similar to like what I have installed in my house. They have, uh, basically, these are the commercial units. The only difference is the residentials don't have the screen, but RFID access, same activation. The only thing I really am not into on these units are the actual cables. The cables get really stiff. Take a look at my friend Tom Malagny. He is the king of level two uh, home charging reviews. And he said it was one of the worst cables he's tested. And I spoke to some of the Autel guys about that and they listened to us and him and they're actually re-engineered and just about to deploy an updated cable uh, based off of our comments alone, which is really great. So I love to see them listening to our feedback. You can see a whole bunch of charging here 
Before we get fully into high power DC, I'm gonna walk you up from least amount of power to most, just to give you an idea of how this actually uh, plays out. Now, this is a unit that I'm actually kind of excited about because one thing we haven't gotten into on this channel yet is vehicle to load, vehicle to grid, vehicle to whatever, that would be vehicle to X. And, um, you know, we don't have solar or battery pack storage, but these are topics I'd like to get into as we look at electric vehicles integrating with more of our total infrastructure. And this is a really neat unit. It's a CCS home charging DC charger. Um, you can see it actually has a pretty thin cable because it's just only 12 kilowatts, but it's bi-directional. Uh, capable. Right now, there's not many vehicles that are compatible with this, perhaps the F-150 Lightning, although I don't know if all the communication's been sorted yet, but this is a product that's going to be launching this year. It works with commercial vehicles right now, uh, school buses, etc. But I'd like to see this installed with uh, Lightning, maybe with Volkswagen ID products, we'll have to see. Uh, and with those, once a vehicle becomes available, I think I'm going to grab one of these and play around with it and see actually how bi-directional charging works. So I like that Autel's getting in that space. This isn't really their highlight product of the show, but I just wanted to let you know about it. I think it's really, really cool. So on the AC charging side, they pretty much go from 40 amps on the low end all the way up to 80 amps. That makes sense for J1772 standards, 80 amps the maximum you can go. So they start at DC down at 12 kilowatts, and here we are at a 40 kilowatt unit. Now this is 40 kilowatt total, perfect for malls actually. It's a nice slim unit, all in one charger. So there's no offboard cabinet here. I think, you know, I, you guys know I love big boy charging. I want 350 kilowatt plus chargers everywhere, but there's not always a need for those. The costs get crazy, the space requirement gets crazy. And there's so many use cases, especially with Hummer EV, with my Rivian, for example, where a two to three hour charge is much nicer than a 12 to 20 hour charge on level two. So this being a 40 kilowatt charger, it will split down to 20 per port, I think is a wonderful situation to have installed at malls, hotels even. Um, yeah, really, really liking this quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I think this is a unit we're gonna see installed out there. The thing that will really determine the success of this unit is price. It needs to be, it definitely will be more expensive than AC charging, but it can't be astronomically more. Otherwise, I think we'll just see people install the 80 amp dual port over this unit here. So this is a very price sensitive market where this one's gonna be operating in. And so I hope that they really priced it correctly. I have no idea. This is called the DC wall mount, but of course can be mounted there uh, on the post. I think also dealerships will really go for this one as well. When we get into some of the big boy DC fast chargers over here, we're talking high, high, high power. So I wanna start with their all-in-one units. Um, all-in-one has pros and cons. The uh, cons to start are weight of the entire unit for installation. The other con would be noise. I haven't heard these things under load yet. I don't know how much noise they make. Uh, but pros are you don't actually need to trench and run conduit over to a uh, power cabinet far in the distance. So I really like that they're going with an all-in-one situation. This can really be configured in a bunch of different ways. And we're gonna open it up here with my friend, John. He's gonna show us all the cubes, but they essentially have a brick of 12 20 kilowatt power cubes right inside this door. Um, it's all actually air filtered air that flows through this thing. You'd be surprised at how many DC chargers don't have filtered air running through them. They also have a cooled and heated screen. So in, in really cold winters, this is heated. In really hot summers, this is cooled. This particular unit is running 300 amp REMA cables in the lower power units, 400 amp uh, with a boost function on the higher power units. I actually think my impression is they could have done a better job of cable selection for this. The 400 amp cables, I believe only have a 10 minute peak, and then they derate down to 350 amps or 300 amps, I believe also from Rima. I'm, a, I'm fine with a boosted cable strategy, especially if it means you don't have to go liquid cooling, which will help with longevity and reliability, just less things to go wrong when you don't have a jacket with dielectric fluid being pumped through but I don't like a 10 minute boost. We really need 20 to 40 minute boosts, uh, especially when we're not talking about peak, peak power. If there's a 500 amp boost cable, then, you know, of course, cars should be able to accept that much power for less time. So that definitely, uh, you know, will change based off the power, but a 400 amp boost, mm, 10 minutes, probably not enough cable for the charger capability. 
But overall, I think we'll see a lot of these spec'd in 120 kilowatt versions, maybe 200 kilowatt versions, 180, somewhere around there, depending on how many power cubes you put in. Support simultaneous charging. You can charge on dual ports, different strategies to share the load. You can do um, anywhere from having the first car get all the power, second car waits. You wouldn't do this really for public use. You would do this for fleet charging, perhaps. You can have it go with a force split. You can have priority on one port over the other. Really just depends on however you arrange that. Um, this over here is, is another all-in-one unit, a little bit taller, a little bit bigger. This one's pretty sweet. Let's just take a look under here. All touchscreen, by the way. This one's set in a 160 kilowatt configuration. Very similar power cubes on the inside. Um, actually, I believe this one and this one, even their main big power um, uh, cabinets over here, all support the same hot swappable modular situation, which is really, really great. You'll see here, these allow for 650 amp cable output, which is now we're talking some serious stuff. So X, EX90, I should say, should be able to achieve max power on this particular unit. Um, and this, what we're looking at here is just a dispenser. So this is very similar to the high power charging stations that you and I are comfortable with today that we're used to seeing. We have an off-board DC charger that can be configured in a bunch of different ways, up over 600 kilowatts, that can feed up to two of these dispensers. But keep in mind, each dispenser has two ports, so simultaneous charging. So technically, one cabinet can output four posts up to a maximum power of, I believe, 680 kilowatts, somewhere around there. Each unit itself can get hooked up to 480 kilowatts in a configuration of just one. So this, I think, is going to be a very popular installation for corridor travel. We're going to see, you know, those, those power cubes are the same things that are in here, the 20 kilowatt bricks. And uh, this is where we're going to see a lot of the high, high power stuff to come. So um, also screens on both sides, which is really nice. So you could have a car angle here and another car angle there. You could do pull through charging. Really a big fan of pull through charging. I'm, I'm really into these units. The big question for me is how is this all going to work when we start talking about reliability, when we get into are they actually gonna you know, power well in temperature regions over time? I think a couple things, my suggestions that I'd like to see right off the bat, and I'm sure I'll have more as I start to use this, but I'd really like to see the Phoenix contact cables get used over the REMA cables here. For the low power stuff, the REMA cable's fine. For the all-in-one, the REMA cable's fine. The one downside is, um, you know, we'll talk to John in a little bit and he'll tell you, yeah, the cable's so easy to swap, and it certainly is. 10 minutes, you can put a new cable onto the all-in-one unit. The problem is, though, um, you know, they're not user serviceable. You have to replace the cable when anything goes wrong. Phoenix Contact, there's some others as well that allow just the end of the unit here, the high contact areas, this part that degrades and can actually weld to a car. Um, those are not serviceable in any way uh, on most cables, on the REMA cables. So I'd really love to see them integrate up into Phoenix Contact for these. Just my impression, I'm a big fan of those cables. I think they look great, they're easy to use. Um, they're using the Huber Schooner cables on the uh, the H&S cables on the high power liquid cooling stuff, which is all on these dispensers over here. So this will be, you know, 500 amp continuous, maybe even more. They claim up to 600 amp output, 680 amp output. That might be in a shared configuration, um, but I hope not. I mean, we've seen these cables do over 650 amps before, sometimes with some charger, <laughs> I think not regulating well enough, but uh, we've seen them do it. So there you go. Let's talk to John here at Autel and then we'll wrap up with our final thoughts. Yeah, I'm really excited to take you on a little bit of a journey here. So, you know, I've been in the automotive industry for about 30 years in my career and mainly dealing with the car OEMs, right, which is super cool. As you talk about EV charging, a lot of the EV charging companies today don't have that automotive foundation. They're usually cloud connectivity, hardware or software companies, right? Autel's a little bit different. Our foundation is in automotive technology. In fact, Autel stands for automotive intelligence, which is super cool. Um, and we're really proud of that. So, you know, one of the things that as we go through this journey and I experienced joining Autel only a few months ago, I went to one of our assembly plants and had the opportunity to see how a product was made. And Autel designs, engineers, and manufactures our own products, which is pretty unique in this space. That allows us to control quality and reliability and technology. Those are really key elements to becoming a successful product in this space. As you know, Kyle, 
you know, the reliability component of uh, chargers has been a big challenge out there in the marketplace, right? And when Autel came to market, we aimed really high. We want to be the high quality guys, right? At a price point that people can afford. And I think as you see our home chargers, you see that online, right? We're in a position where we're prevent, pre, prevent, presenting really high quality, really high reliability and technology at an affordable price. So, you know, as you walk through this journey of our products, Autel doesn't only want to be a charging provider, but we want to bring partners together. So we, want to, we don't want to be a charge point operator, but we want to enable everybody to be able to succeed in this space. So we're taking partners, whether it's infrastructure partners, technology partners, innovation partners, and we're bringing them all together with our hardware and software to make a fleet, a company, a charge point operator successful out there in the marketplace. Hey, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, time to get nerdy with all of this stuff. Do you want to show us a couple cool things just very quickly that help with reliability, how the chargers open up? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to take you over to our DC fast charger and show you a little bit about it. Kyle, come on around to this side. I think it's going to be so the first thing you notice about our chargers has got this big screen. We see uh, this is an opportunity, like this man to machine or man to person interface, right? To be able to interact. We're gonna spend a lot of time at chargers. So we wanna make it an enjoyable experience. We wanna make it easy for the user. We wanna be able to do stuff, maybe not today, but in the future where maybe your car connects and you can play video games on this thing, right? Like cool stuff like that, right? Uh, Autel has a background in vehicle diagnostics. So maybe every time you plug in, the charger is actually diagnosing your vehicle. We don't go to the doctor enough at the end of the day, right? We don't take our cars in until we hear something happening. How about if we could diagnose it every time you went to the charger and see if, hey, your tire wears okay, you need to get tire replacements. We send a notification to the dealer, they send you a note, and they send you out an appointment to get your tires changed or your, your whatever, rotated. So let's take a look inside. If you ever had the opportunity to look inside a charger, they don't look like this, right? This almost looks like a computer mainframe. You can tell it was engineered with the ability to run this thing efficiently and effectively, but also if it needs maintenance, which we'd hope it never needs, but if it does, the operator could come out very quickly and change things out because it's all up front and center. We don't want this thing to be down for very long if it goes down. We also have the ability to remotely diagnose that so we can re remotely diagnose about 75% of the issues with a charger. That's really fantastic because if the, the installer comes out to make that fix, they already have the part with them. They can put the part in, change it out, and be gone very quickly. That's super cool. Let's, start, let's take a run around to the other side. And oop, let's go over here. So this is where our power modules are stored in the charger and our cable attachments are made. Cool thing is these are 20 kilowatt power modules, right? You can stack them up to 12 of them to make 140 kilowatts or 240 kilowatts out of this unit. But these come out like a hard drive and a computer. Couple screws, pull it out, put a new one in. If one of these fails, the charger doesn't completely go down. It only reduces by 20 kilowatts. So you can still keep charging you'll just charge at a little less power, which 20 kilowatt drop isn't a big drop. It's not gonna hurt you. It's not gonna kill you in the end of the day. The other thing that's nice about our chargers is you can get at the cable system really easy. So if something does happen to the cables in 10 minutes, you can take out this cable, put a new cable in, and you're up and running again. So again, we've done this with purpose, with engineering expertise, and really thinking about the whole thing, not just the end user who's gonna use the charger, but how to keep this thing up and effectively running throughout the day. This is an air-cooled event. We got a filter in here, so the filter can be changed if they need to, if it gets clogged up or whatever, and it draws air across the units to keep these cool so that they stay up and running. There's fans on the other side to pull that air across and out the other side of the unit. And for installation, do you have hooks on top so they can drop them in? Yeah, the hooks are on top for handling it. These are about 1,800 pounds, so they're pretty big, heavy, heavy people at the end of the day, but they can do this pretty easily. They can install it in, let's say, a day or so once the infrastructure's in the ground. Could you talk to us just a little bit about the power cube that you have over here, this unit that would feed essentially this dispenser? Yeah, so uh, much like a, a lot of the big, big power systems. So this is talking now, we're talking about we're going up from 480 kilowatt to 640 kilowatt. That's a liquid cooled system, so these cables don't get too hot. 
you can keep the charger up and running at high power longer if you keep it cool. But the power cabinet is usually placed somewhere else. So it allows you to put these thin, very nice dispensers. They have 4K TVs on both sides. So you can promote whatever you want to your clientele, your environment. Originally, Autel said, well, we can use this for advertising to give the charge point operator another way to make money, right? Until the util utilization of chargers goes up, we have to keep them in business at the end of the day. So that gives them one direction. But we're finding the value in this is to be able to promote somebody's own message, right? So we want to give them the ability, let's say it's a, a town at a school, they can promote the book club, what's going to happen, the football game, whatever they want on these screens. So it's really a cool thing. So all the power electronics are in this cabinet, whoop, in that cabinet at the end of the day. These are all touch screens, by the way, in the cabinet at the end of the day. And it's remotely, it feeds four of these dispensers. Very cool. And, and power sharing strategy can be what exactly? Yeah, we have dynamic load balancing. So if you don't have enough power, you have too many cars sucking too much draw, it will actually dynamically load balance between the different dispensers to keep you under that power threshold so you never you know, go exceed that power problem and have the unit shut down or overheat. Cool. Well, thank you so much for the tour. Congrats on the awesome booth. Thank you. To Otto, I know you just joined, but uh, I think you found yourself a cool spot to work. It's awesome. I am so happy to be here and be part of the solution. So thank you, Kyle. Thank you.